Hello, everyone. A very, very good afternoon. Welcome to Home Choir. And you'll be relieved to hear I made my own coffee today. No, no mystery coffees, no green demons knocking me out in the middle of a broadcast. I mean, how incredibly rude. But thank you to everyone who's asked after my health. I had a lovely sleep here on the floor. And when I woke up, the stream had ended. And um, I haven't had a chance to see what he got up to. I just hope, I hope it wasn't too bad this year. We'll see if we can get rid of him next year. I don't hold out much hope, though. So, here in the West Country, and indeed across much of the UK, there is a storm. Storm Kieran is blowing in at the moment, and goodness me, Kieran is definitely having a good old go at laving the windows. So you might hear some rumbling and rustling and so on going on in the background. You might also hear the fact we've got a rather nice uh, chap called John, who is currently painting outside in the hallway here. So if you hear thumps, bangs, crashes, it's basically a combination of Kieran and John. One is a storm, one is an excellent workman. Uh, and we are just going to learn this lovely piece by Quad Fleek in the middle of all of that. I mean, where else but here on Home Choir would you be learning a piece by uh, Johann Gerhard Quad Fleek? I believe people have been looking him up, and I think it was Emma who said in the live chat here that uh, she looked him up, and the top hit was a, uh, I think, a plasterer. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. So there we are, a tradesman. So we've got our organ here today for this really lovely piece, though. It, it is a fantastic little, it's a little gem by a pretty much unknown composer. And that's one of the things I'm really enjoying about the Choral Alphabet series. We do have a few well-known composers hidden away in there. You know, we've had Haydn and we've had Purcell and Offenbach, but we also are celebrating some of the lesser-known composers who happen to have these slightly more unusual names, hence Quadfleek. Now, next week, I'll tell you about next week once we start the broadcast, but it's another Ave Verum Corpus to add to our growing list, and I've just been recording it this morning. It's really, really nice. So, looking forward to that one already. Anyway, so just going to check that everything's set up. We've already heard the organ, but if I just get rid of the piano sound as well... chapel of uh, Patchway Cathedral, not the full organ, just the chapel organ. Okay, so do we have the acoustic? We do. And let's just check we can hear the recording. Again, Patchway Cathedral Choir. This is only a two-part piece, but I have recorded all four parts, so doubling up. So altos and basses together and tenors and sopranos. So this is what it sounds like. This was written at the turn of the 20th century, but you would really be forgiven for thinking this is a little bit of maybe late Baroque, early classical. There is one chord in there that uh, gives it away as being early, late 19th, early 20th century. It's a little Elgarian moment, whether that was deliberate or not, but uh, see if we can spot it as we go through. So I hope everyone is well. As you can see here, the, the, the light is but all but gone from outside. This is with the curtains open, everyone. It is extremely dark and dingy here. Um, so I've got some extra lights on. So uh, I think we'll just have to make do and uh, get on with our recording today. Hello to everyone who I know is watching later on, in particular to everyone who has subscribed recently. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It is, of course, completely free. And we love to have as many people as possible come along and join our community that loves to learn and sing together the most wonderful choral music in the world. Uh, if you do like what we do, please consider that thumbs up. Again, it doesn't cost you anything. It's all free. And you can just find that thumbs up beneath the video. And hello, as I say, to everyone who's watching later on. You're all superstars. Thanks to everyone who leaves us comments. Thanks to everyone who catches up at the end of their busy day. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello to everyone who is watching live, but not in the live chat this afternoon. In particular, to Helene and Bill and Val in California. Hello, as always, to Sue and Tony and Sally and Annie and to Maureen. Hello to Harry and June. Hello to Anne and Linda and Charlotte and Nikki and Katie and Hu Yen 
and Val and to anyone else who is watching at the moment. And then hello everyone. Let me see. I'm going to pop up my participants list. Coming to working today. So hello Alison. Hello Anne. Hello Barbara. Hello Carol. Hello Diane. Hello Dorothy. Hello Elizabeth. Hello Emma. Hello Fiona. Hello Glennis. Hello Gloria. Hello Gwyn. It's Anna in the comments today looking after all of you. Hello, Jean. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Lorraine. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mike. Hello, Nicola. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Sean. Hello, Soraya. Hello, Susanna. Hello, Virginia. Hello to everyone. Let me just check that everyone's here. Suzanne wants the green guy back. No, Soraya wants the green guy back. Why is he, is he more fun than me? <laughs> Well, no, he's back in his box, Soraya, for uh, for another year or so. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Fantastic. I suspect he's never really far away, says Lisa. Well, yes. Hello to Hillary. Good afternoon to you. Hello, Jane. Fabulous. Good to see you. Work hard. Lots of people disappointed that the green guy isn't here today. Well, I'm afraid... Is it, this is the problem, you see, when you have a cover teacher come in. And they end up being more popular than the teacher who's uh, who's actually there. <laughs> anyway, so as I say, hope everyone's doing very well. Hello, Susanna. Good afternoon to you. And uh, just, of course, many of you are also involved in Choir of the Earth, which is the other channel that I uh, help run. And this afternoon at five o'clock, we are premiering the Carmina Burana recording. I've just been getting that all set up here, running it through. My goodness me, it sounds amazing. So if you are around this afternoon at five, please consider coming along and watching the Carmina Burana premiere. Bearing in mind it's a conducted live version, so it'll be yours truly sitting here conducting into the camera as always. But then on Friday, we're going to have this very special presentation, the, uh, the video version with some wonderful, wonderful footage to go alongside the Carmina sound and it creates I think a really nice package of beautiful sound and amazing visuals that really up the spectacle and really make things I think a little bit more interesting to look at than just a bearded bloke waving his arms in a room in Bristol so that will be the one to share with people that you know far and wide to really I think continue to do the good work of selling this concept of online singing, which people still associate with lockdown. Isn't that just a lockdown choir? No, it's not. We've been out of lockdown for such a long time, and yet we are all still meeting and singing together and producing wonderful music. Speaking of which, uh, things are going very nicely with Onata Looks. I've had an update from Connor and Kai, and they are working hard on that at the moment. And so we should have a preview, which I shall be sharing with Jamie. I'm not going to share it with you, folks. I'm going to wait until we've got a finished version that Jamie is happy with, but it is taking shape beautifully, and you'll be hearing the home choir Onata looks in support of Choirs Against Cancer in the next couple of weeks or so. Very, very exciting. So once again, hello to everyone who's watching live. Great to see all of you. And uh, do enjoy today's teaching session. Not going to be desperately long as there's only two parts to learn and it's 30 bars in total. It's a really, really nice piece. So I think we should get started, don't you? Um, let's uh, let's sing the B-flat chord. So let's break out the... Uh... There is your B-flat chord. Sing home choir and let's begin our broadcast. Here we go. And... <laughs> Wonderful. I just turned my headphones up a little bit too loud there. But a beautiful chord nonetheless. A very, very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Choral Alphabet. This is a series that we started back in January of this year with A for Allegri. Well, today it is Q for Quadflieg, as in Jakob Gerhardt Quadflieg, who was an organist and musician in Germany around about the turn of the 19th to 20th centuries. I can't find any photographs of him, so the image of the kindly, slightly Father Christmas Santa Claus type figure you see here, composing away, is actually a mid-journey generated image when I told mid-journey to tell me, well, to show me a picture of Gerhardt 
ja Jakob Quadflieg composing in his study. So whether he looked like that or not, I suspect he might have done. Uh, we're going to learn his lovely piece today called Inte Speravi. It is written in a very, fairly neo-baroque, neoclassical style. So some really, really nice lines, nothing too complicated. It is written for tenors and basses, but we are going to double it up. So sopranos will learn the tenor line, altos will learn the bass line, and we'll sing it all together at the end. Uh, now, we will have more choral alphabet next week, but in between that, we've got some more fantastic home choirs to look forward to on Friday. This time on Friday, we shall be uh, well and truly into the Tom Lehrer special. And we've learned quite a bit of Tom Lehrer's output. This week is probably the most grisly of the pieces that we've learned so far. And I appreciate we have already learned I Hold Your Hand in Mind, dear, which is rather revolting. This one is particularly nasty. So just bear in mind, um, it is Fun Friday. It's all supposed to be taken uh, lightly. But just bear in mind, this is particularly grisly. And alongside things like Poisoning Pigeons in the Park and the Hunting Song, I mean, it really is going to be a dark humoured but really good fun, fun Friday. And then on Sunday, we've got a beautiful mix of music. We're going to have Bird's Ave Verum Corpus. We're going to have Mozart's Secret in Holocaustis, which we haven't sung for ages and ages. That is the setting of the Clarinet Concerto. Uh, we're going to have some Handel. And of course, we're going to have today's Quad Fleek along with the uh, the other gospel pieces we normally have on a Sunday. So a wonderful array of music, everything from mad Halloween specials through to beautiful Sunday sings. Now, of course, next week we're going to continue with the choral alphabet, and it is R for Reinberger, as in Joseph, Joseph Reinberger, and this is a setting of his Night Song, which is a piece that I know, uh, I've heard it played by string quartet and also on the piano. Well, this is a setting where they've taken that beautiful Night Song and set it to the words of the RFFM Corpus. I've just been recording it this morning. It's really, really nice. Very romantic, and I think you folks are all going to enjoy it. So lots coming up. Just to say, if you support Home Choir and you like what we do, uh, I thank you very much indeed for everyone who supports Home Choir through donations, whether that is a one-off or a monthly donation. Every penny that you send really does help the channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you, all superstars. And if you like what we do and you'd like to buy us a coffee, you could do so by visiting homechoir.org slash donate. And of course, the newsletter is where you find all the information that you need to be a member of Home Choir, all the streams, all the links, all the scores. So watch out for that in your email. And if you're not signed up yet, go to the website homechoir.org fill in the form under newsletter sign up and then you are done don't forget to tell us of course when your birthday is as jackie did and it's jackie's birthday tomorrow so we will sing for her in just a minute but let's go full screen into my darkened cave here it really is very very overcast and stormy outside so i think we shall enjoy singing some lovely warm music first of all let's roll our shoulders around please everyone and then bring them, uh, roll them back the other way. I see we've got more people joining us. Hello to Michael and to Mike. Hello, Jen. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Gaynor. Hello, everyone. Splendid to see you. Bring your shoulders up. Jane's here as well. Hello, Jane. Deep breath. And as you breathe out, relax your shoulders. <sighs> Great stuff. And just roll your heads around. I hope everyone who who enjoys Halloween had a good Halloween. And if you didn't, I hope you enjoyed your game of uh, what my daughter's friend called hide and seek just without the seek, where you turn off all the lights and pretend you're not home. But I had a lovely time yesterday, conducted my Yui choir, and uh, I dressed as the Phantom of the Opera, kept the mask on the entire rehearsal. As I've, I've said to a few people, never let it be said that I do not commit to a bit. But then again... If you're a long-standing member of Home Choir, you already know that. So let's warm our voices up, and uh, with help of the piano works, let's hum up and down the major third up to the fifth. Here we go, and... Thank you very much indeed, everybody. And let's just quickly bring 
and the birthday back on screen. So for Jackie, the birthday girl for tomorrow. Thank you so much for subs uh, subscribing, Jackie, and hope you have a fabulous day, everyone. Let's sing for Jackie after two. A one, two. Happy birthday to you. of a Baroque organ accompaniment for that one as well. Happy birthday for tomorrow, Jackie. Have a really good one. So, everybody, what we're going to do now is put the score up on screen. And so we go, billy doo This is Inte Speravi uh, by, <laughs> brilliant name, Quad Fleek. And so what we're going to do is we're going to listen to it all the way through in its full version. So you're going to hear altos and basses singing the lower of the two lines. You're going to hear tenors and sopranos singing the upper line. It's not very long. It's quite slow and steady. And it is, as I say, written in a neo-baroque, neoclassical style. That is, composers writing the 20th century, but very much in the style of the Baroque and classical masters. So here we go, let's sing it all the way through, and then I'll start with, I think I'll start with the altos and basses today, and then we will sing it through with them, and then we'll have the uh, tenor and soprano line. So here we go, from the top, you're gonna hear the organ introduction, and here it is for the first time, enjoy. everyone see what I mean it's a really nice little piece it could have been written by one of Bach's contemporaries bit of Handel maybe or even perhaps one of Haydn's uh, early childhood chums it really is a really nice little piece so let's get on with learning it shall we so you've got this little introduction leading you to the fourth bar, to C minor here. And let's start off with the altos and basses. So it's the low of the two lines. And so we sing. Let's sing that together. Ready? After four, three. 
for in Do you remember to sing all the way through to the end of the phrase? A piece like this really does reward that kind of singing. Then we have the tenors and sopranos. Now in bar nine, they finish their phrase on a D. We pick up there in bar nine, last note on the G, and we sing two, three. In Nice line there. So listen to the pitches. Two, three. Two, three. And that nice domine really sing through the bar line. Let's sing that together, please, everyone. Last note of bar nine. This is basses and altos together. One, two, three. Inter Now, Dixie, Dixie. So we sing one, two, Dixie, Dixie. Obviously, Alto singing the octave above. Listen to those pitches. Ready after two. One, two. And one. Again, we've got a tied note going across between bars 14 and 15. So when you're singing, if I just put a bit of acoustic on, you can get this lovely effect where you sing. Dixie, Dixie. Really enjoy singing through that line. Okay, fabulous. So we arrive there at bar 16 on a C minor chord. He then starts bar 17 by moving to E flat major, which is a perfectly valid move. The tenors and sopranos start on the first beat. Altos and basses start on the second beat. So it's one, two, estegos, meus. It's a really nice kind of slightly creepy line. Coming down the scale there, you're thinking up. Okay, so it doesn't go flat. Two es deos here, bar 17, after one, three, four, one. Two es deos meus. Excellent. Now, again, we move up to G minor here in the last bar, just above me up there. And we come in on the second beat. So it's one, two, estegos, meus. It's the same phrase, just up in pitch. Listen to it again. I'll play it with the alto pitches as well. So here we are after one, three, four, one. So let's sing that together from bar 21 to S. After one, three, four, one, two, S. Excellent. Now we get a bit of a solo, basses and altos. So we sing. In manibus tu is Okay, nice and line. The one thing to watch out for is that penultimate bar just uh, up there. With the quavers on. Just the timing there is not quite what you expect, so be really alert as to that. So the last note of bar 24, listen to the pitches in manibus. So it's two, three. That me are not quite what you expect, but still lovely. Let's sing it together in manibus two, three. In manibus two is tempora me. Great stuff.
stuff. Now, you, from experience, having sung this, you're going to need to grab a very quick breath after May or possibly even sing through and stagger the breathing because he has us carry straight on into the next system. Oops, let's go back and just have that last note. So here we are, the last note on the page, or on the line, rather, is two, three. In manibus tu his And this is as high as it goes for basses and altos, just up to that C. So have a listen to those pitches again. This is the last note of bar 28. A one, two, three. Excellent. I'm doing really, really well. We have then three, four, one. In manibus tuis tempora mea. That's a really nice moment. It's kind of the emotional climax of the piece. Have a listen to it for me. This is bar 33 after one. Three, four, one. starts to slow down a little bit there. Let's sing it together in Manibus. And one. In Manibus two is tempora mea. Then we drop down to the E flat and we sing one. Finishing, of course, on the E natural, that is the Tears to Piggity, the Piggity third. Okay, so let's just get, look at the pitches there, the last three bars. So it's one, ah, Slowing. There we go. So what I think we should do, everyone, is to sing it from the top. And what I'm going to do, slightly unusually, is I'm just going to have the altos and basses singing their line. I'm not going to have tenors and sopranos singing against it because uh, we're going to look at their parts in just a minute and it won't be till we do the full sing through at the end. We have both parts. So altos and basses, step forward. This is your uh, opportunity and uh, do enjoy. This is the alto and bass sing through. Here we go. Ready? And... Stay 
everyone. So that's the alto and bass part for In Te Speravi. Let's go back to the beginning and we'll now look at the soprano and tenor line. So I'm just going to quickly swap those parts over. Remember, we will do a full sing through at the end. But for now, let's look at the uh, sop and tenor part. So as you as you know, we've now got six bars uh, intro introduction for the sops and tenors. You hear the basses and altos. Now they give you a rather nice uh, a, a note here. They give you your first note. So we sing in People are asking in the live chat why are why do some of these notes have accents over the top of them? I believe it's because the person who created this score is Spanish, and so this is an indication of the particular sound that they want. Uh, this is a score, of course, from CPDL, which is a marvellous resource. And so just bear that in mind. It has no bearing if you're used to singing church Latin in uh, in English, in French, in German, but I believe in Spanish it's a different sound. There we are. So let's have a look at this first phrase again. In te speravi. The altos and basses give your note and we sing. In te speravi domine. Okay. Then we, we have a breath and then we sing one. In te speravi domine. It's a really nice little line. This is bar 10, so it's one. Okay, so let's sing that together. Bar 10, everyone, and uh, one. In then you grab a very quick breath because you're then in singing Dixie. Oops, wrong way, excuse me. Then we sing Dixie. So it's three Dixies. So let's sing that together. From Dixie here, ready, and. And Dixie, Dixie, Dixie. It's a really nice little line there now. We come in on the first beat of bar 17, unlike the altos and basses coming on the second beat. So it is tu es Deus meus. Listen to those pitches. Sing that with me, please. And tu Great, then you grab another big breath and you then sing Tu Deus Meus Very similar line, just again up in pitch, listen to it Sing that together, shall we please, everyone? It's the last bar on screen. It's up there. Ready? Three, four. Tu es Deus meus. Great. Now we have three, nearly four bars rest, uh, sops and tenors, whilst the outer space is singing Mani Bustu. And on that note there, on that chord, your note is there. So we sing one. In manibus tuis tempora mea. Isn't that nice? So have a little listen to it again. It's one. It's 
singing through. Okay, let's sing that together, please. Bar 28, after one, and one. In monibus to his Very nice indeed. We then drop down and we have In monibus to his That's a really nice moment. It just soars. It, it builds and builds and builds up to that nice high note. So listen to those pitches there. In manibus, so two, three. Isn't that a nice line? Let's sing that together. This is bar 32, last note. A one, two, three. In manibus to his tempora mea. And then just the last little bit is one. the same rhythm as the altos and basses. And just to say, I did mention there was one chord, I think, which gives it away as not being Baroque, and it's this one. That sounds like Elgar to me. That's a, that's a 19th century progression. Doesn't sound like Bach. That's the one little bit that makes me think, yeah, this is neo rather than actual Baroque. So let's go back to the top. We'll sing it through as sops and tenors. We won't have the alto and bass line yet, and then we'll put them together for one last magical sing through. So here we go from the very top, sops and tenors uh, and the organ. This is in Desperavi from the beginning. Enjoy. Here we go. So the basses and altos come in here. Two bars. Deep breath. Two. Three, four. In solo ni bus tu is tempora deep breath and one everyone isn't that a lovely piece it really is i found it would have been a few weeks ago and uh, just hydrate before we have the full sing through i've just got a couple of buttons to press here to make sure all the right places uh, all the right uh, voices sound in the right place 
Um, but yeah, I, I found it. Thought that that's nice. That'll do. And the more I've listened to it, the more I sang it, the more I thought actually no, this is a really rather special little piece. And again, one of the great things about the choral alphabet is that it's a journey of discovery, not just for you, but also for me. And at the end, it'll probably be sometime in the new year, I should think January, early February, we will have 26 pieces, 26 episodes. I mean, it's, it's, it's a book. I might even see if we can put together a special PDF compiling all of them. I have to be careful about copyright, but I'm sure we can do something. Anyway, so this is our sing-through. Having learnt both parts, you're going to hear uh, sopranos, altos, tenors, basses, of course, doubling uh, in the uh, in the octave. So this is Inte Speravi by Quadfleeg, sung by Patchwork Cathedral Choir for all of you in home choir. Here we go, everyone, from the top, and do enjoy. we go home choir that is the latest piece in our choral alphabet in Desperavi by quad Fleek. now next week we will be looking at the ave verum corpus by Rheinberger, uh, which is a resetting of his night song or arbent lead of course it's a beautiful beautiful piece so do make sure you join me for that and of course, there's a lot going on in between now and then. We've got Fun Friday to look forward to, the Tom Lehrer special, Lobachevsky, the hunting song, I Hold Your Hand in Mind, Dear, Poisoning Pigeons in the Park, and of course, the new piece is called The Irish Ballad, which, as I say, is quite grim, but a lot of fun. Then Sing Sunday, something completely different. We'll sing that quad fleek again, along with some Mozart, some Handel, some Bird, and some gospel music. And then next week, the Rheinberger, and a really fun Friday as well, a, a, a music hall piece called Ba Ba Ba. I'll give you, uh, uh, well, I'll let you work out which uh, animal this one refers to, but you will all be buying like for said mentioned animal um if you are around tonight at 5 p.m and you want to come along and hear the most amazing performance of carmina barana please do go over to choir of the earth if you're watching later the performance will probably have happened and so you can watch it live uh or live stream as it was it'll be me here in the studio conducting into the camera and i have to say the choir of the earth are sounding amazing and uh, Anna, who of course is 
here in the chat today. She's done an incredible job of playing in not just all the piano parts, more than two, but of course all the percussion as well. So she is the instrumental support for the amazing recording. We've got Fieri Consort Soloist. It's a fantastic recording. And then of course on Friday at 5 p.m., after Fun Friday, uh, you'll get to see the video version of that piece as well. So loads and loads coming up. Do have a really good day. If the storm is raging where you are, then please do stay safe, stay well, and otherwise we'll see you very, very soon. Take care, folks. All the best. Bye.